The relationship between Veronica and Desi, um, I think it's fair to say it's quite complex. Um, yeah. To what extent was that an organic process that came out through your performances? It was real for me. It yeah. was real for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It, yes, it, well, of course, it's inherent in the story. And, and Charlotte was highly attuned to that mm. process of, dis, of, of that journey of the two characters. Um, but but it, it was organic because uh, Charlotte very, very, very badly wanted Coda to play Desi mm. and there were sorts of union issues and whatnot. So, Kota actually arrived after we'd begun, so there was no rehearsal. Oh, and we hung out well. in the car to set, and that was that was our really, time. We had a couple of suppers together before it got really intense, and yeah. Um, yeah. so it, it kind of happened in real time, yeah. which was wonderful. We have oh. similar personalities, oh. I suppose, as well. Like we have, there's an organicness to it. It just happens really naturally when it works. It works. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, and so you can see that on screen. I said, um, for you both, would you say the dynamic between your characters changes over time on the screen? And, and, and how, how do you think it changes? How do you think it enriches the film? I think that uh, my character, most definitely, the first thing I'll say is um, my character is inspired mm. by Veronica's resilience. And she's inspired by her fortitude and her unapologetic nature, and her ability to just show up, and her, her willingness to dive in, even if it doesn't necessarily, she's like, I'm not going to the wretched group activity. Well, but she's experimental and explorative and discovering and inquisitive in other ways. Mm. Um, and Desi picks up on that. There's a moment where I'm singing. Yeah. And she was like, you should do something with that. Sorry, that was a large knock. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you off the table right now. Um, she said, you should do something with that. And I'm like, no, I can't. You know, and it's, it's a story that we all know. Yeah. It's Desi yeah. is, is a woman that we all know. A woman that maybe has not been kind to herself, that has been more kind to others instead of using walls, glass, um, Desi has a different way of dealing with her trauma mm. and extending her hand to Veronica, mm. you know, and to others. So I, I think that, yeah, the dynamic between us, it kicked off immediately and it was really, it was easy to find because we're both deeply mm -hmm. spiritual and, and understand the invisibilities involved in acting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Has a lot to do with the other. It really does come through and it really, it really does bring the film to life in a lot of different ways. Um, I was going to say the film touches on, on a number of different themes. It touches on identity, I think, both in terms of retaining, fem uh, retaining femininity, um, but also tapping into like maternal instincts because there are there is a maternal instinct. There is a maternal element to your relationship on screen. Um, how much of that came through in the script um, prior to actually shooting? How much was on the page? I, I think it was all there embedded mm. in the story. And I think it was all there from the beginning. Mm. Um, and, and Charlotte was extremely clear mm. in her mm. own head and, and very clear about that arc. Um, did. Yeah, sure. And and I, I guess as 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 you live it through the story, telling it, doing it, mm. it, it, it the, the 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 resonance sort of increases. The the deeper in you go, mm. um, and and actually happily we shot that final scene in the train quite. Close to the end, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. And that and that was just the the, the wonderful luck of the draw mm. that we had actually had a considerable amount of time and we'd gone through a great deal together by then. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, you, you, yeah, you know, it's we could have just as easily shot it at the beginning. It all had to do with the availability of that coach mm. in the train yard. Mm. But happily, it was at the end, and I think just without thinking about it, everything that we had done so far informed the scene, but it was there from the beginning, embedded in the story of the script. I was I was going to say, in terms of the conversations you had with Charlotte, you said she was very specific about what she wanted. Um, but to what extent do you think those initial conversations were expanded on? How much did they they grow in breadth over the course of the shooting of the film? I wouldn't say it intensified. I, I would say it was pretty, um, pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. And she was extremely communicative about it. It was a core value. Anytime we had conversations, mm -hmm. she, she, knew that she, she knows that my mother was um, killed um, when I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And that I grew up without a mother mm -hmm. because my mother was not it. And we talked about it in our preliminary conversation. She was deeply touched. And I do believe that what we are not provided in life, we seek in art. And through that discovery, birth our future and the future of others. And my desire to hold space for stories where I almost live a life unknown was, was obvious. And Charlotte tapped right into it and said, well, I think that this has to be, this, this is perfect for you. You have to do this. You have to do this because it has a lot to do with your own personal healing. And it takes, you know, you take someone intensely in tune to say something like that. I mean, you have to actually care about a stranger, which is not something that many people can do. It's called empathy, you know, and she, she tapped into what my personal individual needs were and desires as a craft, craft woman, craftswoman, yeah. yeah. and tapped into the essence of the film, um, which takes on a life of its own. People say that, but it really is like- It really does. This, it does take on a life of its own. Um, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, it starts to do itself. Mm -hmm. It's you show up and they should, the characters show up mm. and you let them, you let them Do the get out of their way. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, as much as um, she will draws on, on um, horror in terms of maybe the subjugation of women and, and, and those elements, um, mm. to what extent would you agree that Veronica and Desi's journey is an empowering one? Totally. That was what I loved about the story was that Veronica starts in the darkest of places mm. and through this um, completely unexpected presence that starts to inform the whole time of, of as it were, the dimension where these burned women exist and just seeping into the perceived reality through that and through Desi's capacity for empathy, Desi's dealing with trauma, not by shutting off as Veronica has, but by reaching out. Mm. Um, for me, it's profoundly hopeful. Mm. That, that, and it's not just about women and women, it's about the human condition. Yes. Um, hope lies in empathy for each other. Mm. And, and also, not just for human beings, but Charlotte draws down the cosmos mm -hmm. and, and shows us as tiny figures in this vast panoply of sky and earth. Mm. Um, and, and she opens up that power as well. I think it's a remarkable achievement. I mean, I think what she did is she takes it way beyond, she, she somehow opened a space where the story achieved a resonance mm. that 
that I think is remarkable. Yes. Um, it's reverberating also. And, and hopeful, oh. enormously hopeful. I was going to say, um, for me, uh, the film is, is an example of um, very strong female characters uh, telling a very important story, as you've, you've both of you have, have mentioned throughout the interview, uh, which has been pulled into focus quite sharply by, of all things, James Bond and, and the whole debate around whether or not he needs to be a female character. And the, and the discourse came back with there just needs to be more female characters, more strong characters. Um, that can stand up and, and play, you know, play alongside that. Um, from your perspective, as, as obviously actors in the industry, how do you believe the landscape is shifting in the right direction? I think a lot of people are flowing with the river instead of standing in the middle of it, if you know what I mean. Mm. And I, I support and champion those individuals that operate from a place of courageousness that read the room. I think a lot of what we as actors do, we read a room, but most importantly, we depend on our writers yeah. to do that and to develop content that is, is necessary for a global population that has an appetite mm. for change. Mm. Um, you know, I, it's an interesting conversation that's happening and I'm here for interesting. You know, like I'm here, I'm here for, I'm here for things that I, art should be controversial and it should, you know what, it should not be controversial to consider a woman for the, for the lead of a James Bond film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not at all. It's 2021. It's, um, it's, it's a new day age, you know, and mm. people are living in their divine right because they're gender fluid. They have pronouns like this is, you know, like, yeah. Life is not as um, stringent and, uh, you know, particular as, as we once thought. Mm. The newer generations are coming, and as they are supposed to be, of all, they're smarter and faster, mm. wittier, all kinds of things, mm. you know, as they are supposed to be. Yeah. Because yeah. they're here to represent the future and to birth it. And I'm, I'm just really excited to see you know, especially the younger generations demanding, you know, taking to social media platforms and platforms of visibility to really um, change this world, using the tools that are available to them essentially to, to, um, to get their voices heard and across, and let them know, you know, I'm in the room. So it's, it's exciting to hear that, you know, that's, um, that's happening in the industry. And I hope more conversations like that happen. I, I don't think that anyone should be discriminated against the no. color of their skin, for their um, sexual orientation, for their um, for their chosen gender, for the way that they were born, for the disabilities, none of it. Mm. Um, I've gone through enough trauma in my life, personally, mm. uh, to see that there is absolutely nothing that separates us. Nothing at all. It's, um, it's Again, I, th I think it's I think it's definitely part of the conversation, and it needs to remain at, at the forefront. Um, and again, this film just just raised that up in in terms of questions I, I wanted to address and maybe um, open a dialogue with you guys for. Um, I've got one more question to go, and it's really simple. And it's really off topic. Can you describe for me your perfect Sunday afternoon? <laughs> you want to go first? Um, <laughs> I live in, in, in the southwest of England. Uh -huh. um, I live on the Isle of Wight, Alice, so it's fine. What? I live on the Isle of Wight. On the, sorry? The um, Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight. Oh, how wonderful. There you go, you go. So, yeah, I know, I know where you are. <laughs> yeah, so it's just to go out on the moors, to mm -hmm. walk, it doesn't matter whether it's raining or... Or oh, the sun is shining. It's um, just profoundly um, settling and grounding. Um, yeah, that's my perfect Sunday afternoon. Perfect. And for yourself? Without a doubt, it starts with shakshuka. I love making Jewish comfort food. It is divine. <laughs> heavenly, heavenly. Okay. You've got okay. Okay. Um, peppers, feta, the whole works, eggs. And then um, I also make some 
really kick ass uh, blueberry goat cheese pancakes. And I'm very particular about my pancakes. I believe the best ones are crispy, not cakey. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. them and a lot of oil. And um, it's, you know, fit girl Sunday, basically, where um, calories don't count. Uh -huh. And it's enjoying maybe, um, maybe going to Rose Bowl or uh, Long Beach Flea Market. I live in California, I'm in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I really mm -hmm. like the thrift shop. I like vintage shopping. I'm a New York art girl. So a lot of the things that I wear just come from secondhand shops that people don't care about anymore. And I like to put pieces together in, a, in an interesting way. So yeah. typically I'll yeah. find like trinkets and really just random things at that market that, that are divine and wonderful. That's my cool. I, I know we're out of time, but can I double back? You can, by, by all means, I ask, I ask the ladies at B, they have the power. <laughs> Here we go. So Perfect. We were, talking, we were talking about the conversation changing, mm. but I've been doing this for an extremely long time. And what's rather wonderful is the serendipity or the synchronicity of the way in which the actual marketplace has opened up, mm. which is part of making the conversation changing possible yeah sure because now you can make a film on an iphone mm -hmm. <laughs> when i started you needed a crew of a hundred and you, you needed film stock which was eye-wateringly expensive you needed labs you could not you needed a vast amount of money mm -hmm. you needed cinemas to release it you've got youtube now it's changed the conversation. The fact that Netflix has to provide material and they started this. Um, HBO was writing brilliant stuff for television before Netflix, but, and, uh, you know, Netflix content is by no means um, evenly remarkable, but it is interesting because what's happened is that the marketplace has changed beyond recognition. The actual delivering content, yeah, sure, has facilitated the fact that all these conversations can happen mm. because it's no longer a small group of people controlling mm. what the conversation will be. Mm. It's blown it wide open, and it's it's the one facilitates the other. Yeah, absolutely. Possible. It's just, it's just a very astonishing moment in time. I, I say to young filmmakers, you have no idea how remarkable this moment is. Take your phone, make a movie with your friends. Yeah. Just talk about something that really means to you. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, when, when I started, it was simply not possible. Yeah. Didn't, it, it, the possibility didn't exist. It's wonderful, and it's going to change the world. It is. I mean, we, it is. Because structures, structures are disintegrating. I'm yeah. They, they're becoming fluid. They're becoming non-existent, essentially. Exactly. So it's an extraordinary moment. Mm. And, and I think a snowball has begun to roll that will mm. gather speed and momentum. Oh, let, let's hope so, ladies. Let's hope so, shall we? Yeah, yeah, for everyone's benefit. Mm. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. This is this has been this has been fun. It's been informative, Good. and the film Thank is you. really interesting. Um, Lovely, genuinely really interesting, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much uh, both for joining me. Um, so I'm going to start with a real um, filmmaker's question, really, uh, which is, how did the idea for the film originate, Charlotte? Um, sorry for Malcolm's had this. Um, <laughs> I got um, <laughs> sorry, no. oh, don't be like that. Come on. I'm sorry. Um, basically, um, yes, one of my exact producers, Ed Clark, put me in touch with Kitty Percy, who'd got like a, a draft of this, um, of this uh, amazing now, script. Does he know who will, Kitty is? She's the screenwriter, um, of the, of the script. Um, and then we worked together and developed the story from, from her original script that had a lot of amazing elements that I'd already been really interested in within my practice. Okay. Um, trauma, dreams, nightmares, mm -hmm. um, you know, the history of persecuted women, the land. 
and all, all these um, kind of elements that we sort of developed on. Perfect. So looking at Eric, looking at Malcolm's character from the perspective of a the screenwriter and, and B, the actor, um, yeah. to what extent would you consider uh, his implied actions within the movie pivotal to Veronica's trauma? Oh, very interesting question, of which the director will give you an answer. <laughs> um, um, well, it's it definitely, um, uh, definitely pivotal and definitely, definitely very important. I guess, you know, in some ways, um, it, it could also be seen as as the as the journey of a, of a woman who sort of through an operation faces her own mortality and starts to confront with the, the issues that she'd been sort of running away from. Um, and obviously, one of the key issues. You've gotten is, very quiet, Charlotte. Oh, sorry. Um, and one of those key issues. So the story of, of uh, in in some ways, it's the story of a woman who who um, confronts her own mortality and and then has to face certain issues that she hasn't dealt with in her life. And some of these traumas obviously um, um, are linked to, to Malcolm's character. And I guess Malcolm um, brought in his own perspective where in some ways we can be within his guilt or his narrative or within um, Veronica's, um, Veronica's perspective. Perfect. Um, so obviously, Malcolm, you're, you have a limited amount of screen time. Um, how important was it to establish um, your role, both within terms of the ambiguity of, um, of your intentions within the film? Was that in terms of both through the performance, but also um, how you were accountable, I guess? Because it, it, it's very it's intentionally ambiguous as to as to how influential he is to the overall outcome. Does that make sense? I think that um, I, I think he's um, a catalyst, you know, uh, mm. for her because you know there's these feelings that she's never gotten over about what happened. Now, what happened? is ambiguous mm. you know you um i mean in my mind you know um he was a, a younger director and he groomed this young actress mm. um to get what he wanted for his movie uh, mm. basically i think that was the overriding um, intention of what happened. Now, there was collateral damage here because she obviously um, felt more about this emotional relationship than he did, probably. Mm. And that's the way I justified it, anyway, mm. as the character. Mm. Um, I'm putting no judgments on this, you know, but which makes it more interesting is that you know, it catches up, the guilt catch, kind of catch up to him too. Mm. So not only the victim, but the perpetrator mm. are victims too. I mean, essentially for me, that, that's what made the film very interesting. Aside above and beyond, obviously, uh, the horror tropes and, and the thriller elements and, and uh, the, the yeah. persecution side of things, um, it, it's that the film itself had tremendous depth, I feel. Um, so in terms of character development, um, what were your creative conversations like prior to the shooting between yourselves? I guess we chatted a lot about the character and Malcolm has an amazing approach, which is also to be very truthful to his character's perspective mm. and not to get swayed by, I guess, his own views or, you know, um, that he, he, he might have on a, Which one? On, a certain, <laughs> <laughs> on a certain, you know, on, on certain things. And so as a result, I think like you sort of do feel that kind of progression, as Martin said, of, of his, of, of his guilt and like not knowing exactly in what space you exist, if you are in the supernatural or if you're just in, in a sort of, you know, manifestation of, 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 of anxiety, guilt, um, comeuppance, internal comeuppance in a way. I mean, don't forget this man is 
a narcissist. Mm. You know, he's been, you know, brown nosed all his life, um, told that he's a genius and mm. whatever, which a lot of these directors, by the way, are, especially if they've had an early success, you mm. know. And, you know, he's probably, he's probably, it's not only, you know, Alice's character, Veronica, that he's trampled on. Mm. It's a lot of people that he's probably emotionally um, yeah. trampled on, you know. So it's not only her, probably these guilts and that, I didn't, specifically the only think of Alice, but it was the whole, his whole life mm. had really been that he was, it, it was, a, you know, time for an accounting. And, um, you know, and, and, um, and that's what happened, you know. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether that makes any sense. No, it does. Uh, I think, sorry, maybe. No, no, <laughs> like by, by all means, sorry. please. Carry on. <laughs> sorry, and if, yeah, and I think, uh, I think, and and it's interesting what you're saying because it's also um, that the when 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 obviously the character from the past also manifests herself, and and he he comes face to face with her in a way. There's a visual manifestation of mm -hmm. of, of 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 what's haunting him, and maybe and yeah, I thought yeah. Interesting See, way. to him, to him, um, she's, you know, the manifestation of, of um, you know, how I think he's conducted his life. Mm. And I, I, I think that um, in retrospect, he's not conducted his life in a really um, enviable way, put it that way. There's, there's things there that he doesn't like about himself. Mm. And I think that realization is um, a bit of a shock, you know, to him. I was going to say, um, I'm looking more at um, filmmakers and maybe influences of filmmakers on, on yourself, Charlotte, with specific reference to Mr. Kubrick. I did spot, I thought, some references in there to The Shining. Um, I don't know how far wide of the mark I am, Purely just in terms of um, scenes. Of <laughs> I'm not in the No, I know, but like Kubrick. Um, but oh, yeah, I, uh, there were only two specifics there. There's one, one with um, Malcolm in toward the latter part of the film, which is sort of, uh, it, it's not a mirror image, but there's a scene in The Shining with the gold. Oh, at the room. bar? At the bar? At the bar. And, and the minute the I steel, saw the scene. Right? A steel. Total steel. That's why, that, am I right? I'm so right. No, um, no. Definitely, no. I think that all these. I think that all these. All the, I mean, so many films like definitely influence and become like a language. And I think also mm. that's what's so interesting. Also about having Malcolm in the film is not only is he like obviously an amazing actor, but he also carries with him like a whole iconography that obviously even in the pictures and the images of the of his younger self we bring yeah. in also carry with that that sort of legacy. Mm. And it's interesting in that relationship. Um, with Alice or Veronica's character, because obviously this idea uh, Malcolm was describing earlier, how um, one person's harming another in a way, um, his character is left completely untouched and thriving, um, mm. and her character is left completely sort of broken. Mm. And in a way, there's something interesting in the iconography of that, and the iconography of that Malcolm brings with him. Mm. Um, you know, and that 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 layers into that into that narrative. Mm. So definitely, um, I definitely that plays into the to the to the aesthetic language of the film for sure. I was I was going to say, were there any other filmmakers? Were there what filmmakers um, influenced your approach in terms of of how you shot the film? So basically, like there's so much that um, um, there's also paintings and painters mm. and. Um, uh you know real images like all sorts of stuff obviously mm -hmm. Suspiria was also like um uh, a reference in terms of the boldness of the score and the and relationship to the sort of aesthetic and the bold sort of um the bold freedom of it really um which is amazing 
Um, and, and I guess also there's a lot of stuff that you don't quite realize and that just sort of sits in your head and your eardrums and your eyeballs and just like, you know, just creates, I guess, a, a mishmash in the brain you now of like stuff. And it's also kind of interesting how that uh, any image that you sort of put out into the world also you know anyone who sees that image also brings with them their own mishmash of uh, of iconography and understanding and layering um to it as well so it's, it's quite it's quite an interesting um relationship i was i was gonna say malcolm i, I had a little glance at your imdb and you are hugely prolific um, I think the, la the last time I looked, I, I talked to you briefly during a, a round table for Truth Seekers, a, the comedy show which oh, on Amazon. Yeah. Um, and you've, you've now got something like 13 projects, either in post being announced oh. or, or filming, which, which, is, <laughs> which is absolutely, yeah. it, it's mind boggling. Um, it genuinely is. So I was going to ask oh, you. Everyone wants to be Malcolm when they grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to be needed, I should imagine. Um, <laughs> But um, my question is, what, what is it that still feeds this sort of creative fire, uh, aside, aside from obviously this, this need to, to well, you I, know, I guess, maybe it's, it's, it's examine interesting. other bits of yourself, maybe? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not the person or the actor I was 50 years ago when I did Clockwork Orange. Mm. That is a different person. I don't even know who that is now. And so... He's laughing right? He's lurking somewhere in the closet, you know, or in the cell. But so that, you know, I have changed so much as a person. And now I'm into the grandfather stage, you know, I'm into, and, and actually it's really weird. I've been getting a lot of parts which are up to play the grandfather who has a relationship with the granddaughter or grandson. Mm. And it was, I've been like three or four movies, you know, and I've like, and a television series in Canada too, which I have just shot. Mm -hmm. So, and I was wondering why this was. And I was asking someone, um, a writer of one of the scripts, and I said, and why is it that the relationship with your grandfather is so important? What about your father? Mm -hmm. And it's because there was always an early divorce and the child has been left with no father figure mm. and the grandfather takes on the father's sort of um, persona and the figure of, of in the child's life mm. and so uh, th so you know because divorce was you know has been so prevalent and it's more than 50 that's so interesting yeah, yeah i know yeah so that's why and that's why suddenly there are these terrific scripts and these great relationships because, you know, of an older man to a young kid. Mm. It's really fascinating, you know. Um, and the dynamics completely so, so you're asking me why, you know, and that is why, because the parts are really fantastic, you know, really interesting. And, and this too, and I'm talking about She Will as well, even, mm. even though it's, you know, a cameo, in mm. other words, small role it's not it's actually key to the movie absolutely it, it's key and and even when he's not there they're talking about him or it's in our mind you think oh my god you know so so you know i mean of course one doesn't play that or even think about it until you see it and then you mm -hmm. go oh yeah there you go there, there it is uh, thank god she got that right um, <laughs> Um, right, right, guys. I've got one more question to wrap up. Really simple. Yeah. Um, if you want, if you had any one thing you wanted audiences to take away from She Will, um, what is it you'd want them to feel or want them to talk about as they were leaving the theatre? Well, I think this is a great standard bearer for older women and how heroic they can be. Mm. That's what I get from it. And I think that um, it's it, it's stunning that um, you know that Charlotte gave created this part. Mm. The two of them mm. created this part for an older actress 
and gave her a chance to really have, really do her stuff. Mm. And you, you don't see that very often. It's rare, very rare. And you hear this all the time, actresses, they get to 40, you know, all that. Well, you know, it, it's, it's Alice is older than that. She hits it out of the park. I think she's magnificent. Yeah, it's a really strong and performance. It's really exciting to see it. It's exciting to see a woman, a mature woman, giving such a great performance. And, and I, I, I think, it, you know, so that's what I get out of this. That's what I take away from it. it it's, you know, on, on that level, it's incredible. And for you, Charlotte, do you like I think you can't really, word? Um, no, that, I mean, that's... Follow that, babe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's, a, that's amazing. I guess there's a sense of also, you know, um, a female solidarity that comes through, hopefully, and and through the character of Desi, the possibility of, of potentially non-binary, different ways of, 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 of dealing with shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, enjoy the rest of your junket and um, take care. Um, it's so lovely to meet yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Thank you Thanks so again. much. It's, it's been a pleasure. You.